Hi, this is James from Square Internet with another WordPress tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build a WordPress website from scratch the easy way using Elementor. It's going to be quite a long video. I'm going to show you step by step how to make the entire website from scratch. So we're going to do the header, the footer, page templates. We'll do a home page about us, contact us page, maybe a couple more templates along the way. But you're going to learn throughout the video how to create every part of your website visually using Elementor. So let's dive into the video and get started. I've got a staging environment here set up. All I've got installed is WordPress and the Hello Elementor theme. I'll just show you. So I've only got three plugins active. I've got Classic Editor because uh, I find the Gutenberg editor really hard to work with. Elementor and Elementor Pro. I've just used this WP Reset plugin to clean out the staging environment so that it's just a blank site. And this is the site we're looking at. So we've got absolutely nothing at the moment. It's a blank canvas for us to build the site from scratch using Elementor. And what I've decided to do in the video is I'm going to use an Elementor template that I found, a kind of generic agency homepage template. So I'm going to use this as the kind of starting point instead of importing the template because you know that's easy to do and I want to show you how you can actually build stuff yourself using Elementor. I'm just going to rebuild this template step by step in Elementor and then I'll add on an about us, a contact us and anything else I think be useful and I'll use the same styling that we've got here on this template. So we've got Elementor installed, we've got Elementor Pro installed. The first thing that I'll do is I'll start with this home page. So let's dive in and we want to create the home page. So I'm going to go to pages. I'm going to create a new page and call it home page. And now the page has been deleted. We're just going to click edit with Elementor. So blank canvas here, which is exactly what we need. And we're now going to start working through the home page over here and building it. Instead of uh, diving straight in though and creating the hero section, I'm going to show you how you can save a lot of time building your websites. And we're going to set up some global styling. So what I mean by that is we want to set stuff like the font size, um, font weight and the colors globally so that when we drag and drop widgets and elements they automatically inherit the styling we set up at the start of the video so I don't want to have to go for every single h2 or every single paragraph I don't want to have to style everything individually if that makes sense these blocks here you know I just want to drag and drop h2 text and I guess a h3 or h4 and I want the styling to be there automatically so I don't want to have to do it on each block. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So within the editor, we're going to click the burger menu icon up here. And then we're going to click into site settings. And we're going to go into actually one thing we're going to do um, probably going to do is we need to disable the um, default colors and fonts. So if you see here, in order for theme style to affect all relevant elemental elements, please disable default colors and fonts from the settings page. So we'll just do that step now so that you can follow along. So in the back end, Elementor settings, click these two boxes to disable Elementor's default colors and make Elementor inherit the colors from your theme. And the same for the fonts, because we want to set up our own colors and fonts. So we'll do that. And we can now come back here to site settings. So we're going to start with typography. This is by far the most important section. We can do most stuff just by um, handling our typography and our buttons, as you'll see. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of useful tools to figure out how to match the um, typography and the colors. 
We can actually just grab it from here, from the actual Elementor editor. But I want to show you how you can grab what font's being used, what size it is, etc., from any website, because that's. So to grab that, we're just going to go to Google Chrome. Sorry, uh, yeah, Google Chrome, and we're just going to type in what font, and it's the first result there in the search results. It's a uh, extension for Google Chrome. You can just add that to your Google Chrome and then make sure that you can have your extensions enabled in Chrome, pin it to your extensions bar, and you'll be able to use that as I am in the video. Anyway, back to the video. So I'm gonna use what font to just demonstrate it working. it lets me let's try publishing the page maybe it's not liking the uh, preview where is the uh, page gone view page Okay, it's working now. That's because I've just installed it. So we're going to click on that and we can see this is uh, Sego UI. Um, and the weight is 300. The size is 55 pixels. There's the line height, there's the color. So that could be useful for our header one. But I think if we're going to use this kind of overlay background on every um, hero that could work. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll grab that info and we'll set that as our default H1 tag. And we're gonna do the H1 because it's the biggest heading uh, on the page typically. So what have we got? 55 Sego UE. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but we'll grab all this anyway and we'll go and do it in our typography. So h1 let's try and find the font I don't actually think that font comes with um google fonts actually so to save faffing around um getting that font let's just use something similar let's try Monster app, which is quite a popular font at the moment. Um, and we'll try 55 pixels, 300 weight. So we're going to set the font weight to 300. The line height, we can see it in pixels, it's also at 55. Just close those tabs. And the color that was white. Weight 300, that should do it. Set the color for the font there. That should be done, the H1. Okay, and this here, what have we got? That looks like the regular paragraph text. That looks like a kind of custom paragraph. So what's the best way of doing that? We'll, um, we'll do that bit on its own. Let's look for the next heading we can do. So this looks like the H2 that's being used. So let's do the same thing. What we're gonna do again, instead of having to style every single H2, we're gonna go into global styles and we're gonna set up the styling for all the H2s, the, the default styling for H2 tags on the website. And we're gonna use the Montserrat font again and we're going to set it to 44 pixels um, 400 weight line height 44 pixels and the color we're going to grab we're going to copy and paste the hex code and where it says color here we're just going to paste in that value 
And that's our H2 done. And now for the paragraphs, let's do the same thing to get a default paragraph style. So we'll go back here and we're going to go up to the body text now, which will cover the paragraphs. So we'll go font family, Montserrat. They're using 17 pixels and 31 line height. So we'll do that. 17 pixels, line height 31. The weight is 300 and we'll copy the hex code for the color like so. And that's a lot of the heavy lifting done already, believe it or not. Um, we'll do one more thing. We'll style, we'll call these read mores. We'll make them our H6 just so that we can set up a default, you know, styling for something that can be dragged and dropped in. And we'll call these H6 tags because they're a relatively small size. So let's say that will be our smallest heading tag at 15 pixels. So we'll do this again. We'll go select Montserrat there. Size and line height 15 and the weight is 400. So 15, 15, the weight is 400. We just want to grab that hex code for the color and we'll paste it in here. That's that. Um, this looks like a slightly larger H2. Let's do these headings because this is a um, nicely designed section. And let's say that these are H3s. So we'll go back and set these up. So 27 and 32 on the H3. Monstrat. Actually, what size are H2? 44. This is more likely to be a. Um, H4 actually, so let's do a H4. Let's say 27 pixels, Montserrat font, 32 pixels line height, the weight is 500 and there's the hex code. Yeah, so we'll do that. That looks like one of our paragraphs, but slightly smaller, I think. Yeah, these are 17 pixels and these are 15. Okay, that's not going to be too difficult to tweak. Let's create a CTA heading as well. Let's say this can be the H3. So we'll look at the size of this. So this is 44,500. So it's similar to our H2. Monster at 44, 44, 44, 44 there. The weight is 500. The color of it is white. But you notice there's one difference between this H2. Oh no, they are the same. They're capitalized. I've missed that. My mistake. So we'll, um, we don't actually, oh no, there is a difference. So this one, the font weight is 500. The H2 is quite thin at 300. I think that's the main difference. Oh no, they are, they are slightly, um, the H2 is slightly bigger, but okay, we're going to need to make it so that the heading is capitalized by default because you see it's using uh, all uppercase. So I'll show you how to do that now. So on what we're going to use as our H3, we'll go to where it says transform. And we'll click uppercase. And we also need to do that on, I think, all of our headings. Yeah. They're all um, uppercase. 
that's super easy to do okay so I did it on that one okay and uh, we need to do it on this as well because that's also uppercase okay I think that's about enough to get started with on typography so we'll leave the typography as it is for now and now we're going to go into buttons because the other element we're going to be using uh, probably across a few templates is the button so and to complete this CTA this call to action section we'll need a button styled so do the same thing start with the typography on the button and we'll match it up so 15 15 500 15 pixels 15 pixels 500 on the weight in case you're wondering what the weight refers to it refers to how thick the text is so you know this is quite thin this is quite thick the higher the value the thicker the text I think we got everything we needed there um, so the typography is going to be white on the buttons because it's going to have a different colored background and another tool I've got to access the colors uh, where it's not on a um, piece of typography is this uh, little tool I've got called eyedropper uh, same thing with the what font you can just google uh, google chrome eyedropper install the tool as an extension and then you can pick the colors from anything on the web page so it's really cool it shows you the color you see in the little square there and it also has the value down here so I'm just going to click on the button it will save the value up here I can then just come up copy and paste that value into the background color value like so I can see by looking at the button it doesn't have rounded borders so I don't need to do anything with the border radius I'm going to try and figure out the padding on the button though see if I can get that by in, uh, inspecting the button see if we can match the uh, padding from the CSS that we can see here so if I scroll down I should be able to grab it yeah so this is using the Google Chrome inspector so this is the size of the button in this browser and in the padding we've got 15 on the top and bottom 30 on the sides so if I do the same here I'm going to unlink the values 15 30 15 30 and we don't need to do anything on the border radius I'm going to click update and that's a lot of the hard work done already because taking the time to correctly set up global styling at the start of any website project saves you from having to style every single element individually even if you style one and you have to sort of copy and paste it um, you know you still have to take the time to style that element correctly and then copy and paste it and then move it between templates it's a lot easier to do all this globally so that you're simply dragging and dropping stuff and everything's uniform and looks professional so let's go back to the actual page now and let's see how quickly we can put this home page together so uh, we can get the specs quite easily for this from the Elementor template uh, it just looks like a, um, a full screen row section from the look of it so I'll try and recreate it as quickly as I can um, let's say fit to screen and so we've got a h1 a divider and a block of text with a background image so the first thing I'll do is I'll look for the background image I should have it in my media library because I set this imported this template which image is it? it's that one so okay first step and then it looks like we've got an overlay on the background image which is really easy to do in Elementor and you can have an overlay along with a background image as well so no problem there we'll go to 
background overlay. See if we can figure it out using the inspect tool. If it's too much of a pain, I'll just grab it from the actual uh, Elementor template because we do have that. Yeah, let me just do that. It's easier for the purpose of the video. Let's just figure out what they've done on the overlay. Um, must be this one. <clears throat> What are you doing on the overlay? Okay, there's the color 0 0.89 opacity. So we're going to set um, the color here. So we want the overlay to be this color. It's a gray color. I guess it's matching, um, you know, the other gray colors used throughout the template. And then we're going to increase the opacity from 0 0.5 to 0 0.89. And you'll notice that when you increase the value, uh, the opacity increases. So, you know, it's uh, less transparent. So the lower the value there, the more, the more transparent, the higher the value, the less transparent. So if we set it to say 10, we'll see most of the image without much overlay. If we put it back to 80, 0 0.89, then most of the image will be quite covered by the overlay. So that looks okay for now. In terms of the position of the image, We'll center it uh, and the size, we'll set it to cover so that it covers the section. And then let's preview what we've got, see if it matches. Yeah, it looks basically the same, doesn't it? So, okay, that's that sorted. That will do for now, I think. Let's now start putting together the elements here that we've got to show you how easy it is to put it all together in Elementor. So first thing we need to do is drag and drop a heading and that's not my, um, all my styling that I saved. It's gone wrong there then. Okay, so it has all saved. I did disable this stuff. Maybe it didn't save. Let's just disable it anyway. So that it all inherits from my site settings. Let's just refresh the page. And let's make it a H1 tag. It should be an uppercase if I saved that correctly. I did not, so I'll just do that now. Okay, so there's the H1 from here. And let's just come up with some, oh, let's just uh, use that one. Um, your local web agency. Let's try that. Looks like there's some sort of shadow. Why is there a shadow there? Let's just clear that off. Okay, there's the H1. Next thing we need is a divider. So if we search for divider, we can drag and drop one in, we can center it. We definitely don't want it to be 100% width. Um, just to say 10%, something like that. Style solid. It's got a bit thicker that one and it's using the violet red. So let's make the changes. You can probably see how thick that is. If we inspect it. Yeah, they use 10% width as well. So same as me. Mm. Border width, five pixels. Okay, that's exactly what I put as well. 
So exactly the same. Looks like there's some spacing though between the heading and the divider. So I'm right clicking and uh, typing, sorry, I'm right clicking and clicking inspect if you're wondering what I'm doing. Should be able to see the spacing. So this is a border of five pixels for some reason. Let's just add a bit of spacing, that's probably easier. So I'm gonna search for spacer. I'm just gonna drop in a small amount of spacing between the heading and the divider. I'm gonna refresh the page. It's looking relatively similar, given that we've got a different font and a bit more copy going on. Uh, let's just reduce that down to five. So the next thing we need to do is get a paragraph there. So go back into the Elemental Editor and we'll just search for a text editor. So this text isn't going to match our global styling because remember we set up the global styling based on these paragraph blocks because most of the time we're not going to be using white text uh, for our body text. We're going to be using you know regular colored text like dark gray or black either against a white background or against a slightly um, gray background. So that's the reason we didn't do that. But it's very simple for us to now make it match. We're just going to open up what font like we did. We're going to center align the text. Um, we just write a little bit of copy. We provide a wide range of web design and development services for your business. Contact us for a consultation. Just to fill it with some copy. We need to make the text white. So I'm going to style changing the text color. So 21,532. Let's make the changes to the font size, the line height, and the font weight. And you'll notice this text sits a bit better than my text, which is kind of spanning most of the page. So if we want it to uh, be a bit more condensed, I'll show you a really easy way of doing that. Come into content and click on uh, text. And what we're going to do is we're just going to insert a couple of breaks to break the text up and make it look a bit better. I think a good place to put the break would be Let's try here between development and services. So just going to insert a BR like that. Click update, refresh, and voila. It looks a lot better like that. Uh, it's sitting better. So final thing I'll do is I'll duplicate the spacer, I'll drag it and drop it beneath the actual uh, divider. Click update one more time, and then I'm refreshing the preview just to see how everything sits. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, you know, it's basically identical apart from the fact that we're using Montserrat font, which uh, obviously renders a bit different to the font used here. But we have our initial section done. Um, let's look at the responsive view. Okay, so responsive view is not looking um, amazing. So I'm going to show you now at the outset how we can quickly make it look good um, on the responsive view. And we're going to be coming back to the global styling again quickly, and you'll you know really quickly see how useful it is to do everything at the global level, so that it's just a case of dragging and dropping stuff onto the page effectively. I'm going to go into the actual template within Elementor, because it's going to be quicker for the purpose of the video than me um, minimizing my screen and doing it the hard way. So I want to 
I just want to see what their template looks like on mobile so that I can um, duplicate similar. Okay, so ours is probably going to look a bit better than this on mobile. I don't think we need to look at theirs too much actually. Let's go into back into site settings, typography, and we're going to watch the changes take place as we go. So first thing I notice when I look at this is that there's too much on the screen. Everything looks too big. So I want to edit my H1 first of all. And you'll notice there's a mobile icon next to size because the changes I'm now making are only going to be applied in the mobile view. So I think it was something like 55 pixels. Let's try 30, uh, which looks okay. Line height, I'll set to, looks a bit cramped. That looks okay. So header one, done. That was easy, right? Then body text. We've got our break there, so it looks a bit all over the place, but I still think that's too big. So we'll do the same thing. What's the body text on desktop 17? Let's try 15, maybe even 14 and click update. And come back to our actual page. And what I'm going to do to make sure that everything looks good on multiple devices is I'm going to duplicate this text block. And this is going to be the text block for desktop. I'm going to go into advanced responsive settings. I'm going to hide it on tablet and mobile. And then for this text block, I'm going to hide this on desktop. And I'm going to come in to where I place the uh, break. For some reason, the break has um, disappeared. So what's going on here? Um, mobile. Let's try and make it look good on mobile. I don't think that text size has updated. That doesn't look like 14 pixels. Let's try and um, refresh the editor. Just so that everything syncs up. Hmm. Okay, so for some reason um, that wasn't updating. I wonder if that's cache. Let's take a look now. Topography body text, mobile view, Montserrat, 14300. Changes have been updated. Let's open the page up, new, see if we can get everything to sync up. Oh, that's the actual template. This is the one. Just trying to figure out why um, caches are uh, being a pain. I know why, right. Okay, I know why, because this is not the default paragraph text. You see, it's got uh, values already assigned to it. The default paragraph text is obviously um, 
this if I drag and drop. And if I go on uh, mobile, that is 14 pixels. Okay, that's fine. Um, remember, we overrode the actual um, default paragraph text because we're using white text on a uh, overlay background. Usually, as I said, you're not going to be using white text. So, so to make this look better, we'll just set that to 14. Okay, that's going to match up a bit more. And I'm going to do one more thing. I just want to add a bit of padding. I always add padding to my sections. Um, I'm going into advanced padding and padding is just spacing uh, between the outside edges of the box on the inside. So margin would be spacing on the outside of the box. Padding is on the inside of the box. So if you imagine, um, you know, like someone pushing from the top, left, right and bottom saying, you know, there's 10 pixels of space. Uh, from the bottom to where other content can be. I'm just going to put 10 by default. And now if you notice, it just looks a bit better. There's a bit of space between the top sides and the bottom of the box. So yeah, that's starting to look really good now. We'll leave that as it is. I think that section is near enough ready. I don't generally uh, do a lot of uh, optimization for tablets to be honest because I don't get a lot of traffic on my website from tablets I think the amount of traffic for tablets is generally a lot less than desktop or mobile but you can do exactly the same thing um, in the site settings on your typography for tablet devices it's the same thing instead of selecting mobile you just select tablet and set the values that you want and if you go into responsive mode you can switch between desktop, mobile and tablet like so to, you know, view what it's going to look like. I think that's um, looking pretty good on mobile. I really wanted it on mobile to look so that everything was within the fold. And by that, I mean, when you load the page, you can see everything without having to scroll. So I don't want everything to be too big for the user, you know, without having to scroll to see what's going on. So anyway, I think we're good now on the top section. So let's go back and carry on with the template. This is the completed template. So the next section we've got is what looks like a slider. It doesn't slide at the moment, but that's probably because there's not enough stuff in there. So that looks fairly simple. Let's create that section. So I'm going to add a new one column row or section and we're going to put a slider in there. Uh, I think that's an image. No, that is slides, isn't it? I think that slides. I think so, yeah. Let's try um, with slides. I can't tell if it's image carousel or slides. It's been a while since I've worked with a... Uh, I think it might be image carousel if there's the option to let's try image carousel actually I think it's image carousel so we'll get rid of slides and we're using one two three four five six logos so I've just inserted an image carousel and at the top we have the uh, ability to control the images within the carousel so I'm going to start with that firstly. I'll put one, two, three, four. I think those are the, uh, so let me just add the uh, logos. So we've got that, that one there, that one there, that one, this one, dig it and the um, cull one, if I can find them. Can't seem to find those. Let's um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just insert those. And now let's try and make it match. So image size full. So we don't want anything pixelated. Slides to show, slides to scroll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
got one, two, three, four, six before this slider activates. So we'll do that as well. Slides to scroll. How many are scrolled per swipe? I guess six. Image stretch, no. Arrows and dots, we just need none. Or is it just the arrows? Just the arrows, yeah, that's what they've got on their slider. Um, their images, there's quite a bit of space in between them and they're a bit smaller than ours. So let's look at how we can do that. So their arrows are on the outside, so let's do that. Size, size of the arrow I see. Looks about 10 pixels, something like that. Oh no, that's a bit small. That's still a bit small. Didn't guess that very well. That's uh, 30, that'll do. Let's get the color of the arrows using our eyedropper. So we'll paste that color in there. And now the color matches. If you look at the slider here though, you'll see there's spacing, quite a bit of spacing between each item and the items are a bit smaller. So we're going to need to match that to our slider. I think that arrow is also um, thinner perhaps, but let me do the spacing first. So let's look at the image spacing default. So we're going to change that to custom. Um, I don't know, it looks like 30 pixels maybe, something like that. Uh, let me click update and we're going to need to preview this to see how it's looking. So I don't think that's pixels, might be some other value. Let's change it to 60 and refresh our preview. I'm just um, clicking here where it's got preview changes. Uh, looks a bit closer. Still think there's a bit more spacing than that though, so let's try 80. And uh, I'm just refreshing the page. That certainly looks closer to the level of spacing they've got. I'm going to set it to 90. So I think we're almost there. Mm. Okay, I think that's close enough. But there's some spacing at the top and the bottom of this section, padding. Remember we talked about padding just previously. So I want to figure out uh, what that padding actually is. so that we can um, copy it to make it look the same. So there's 10 pixels padding there. It looks like double that though on the actual um, section. So let's add 20 and uh, refresh. So it looks very similar now. One difference that I notice is that they've got a, uh, a border here. So we'll place that border on ours. I think the border's on this section. Where is the border? Must be on here then. Where are you, border? Huh. Let's just do this instead. It's easier when looking through all the CSS to find where it is. We'll just take the color of the border and we're going to put a one pixel border on the bottom of our section. 
uh, not everywhere, just on the bottom. And we're going to make it the color of this border, like so. We'll click update. And um, yeah, that's the slider section done. Let's see what that looks like on mobile. Uh, it looks okay, I think. I think it's um, basically the same as uh, theirs. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks okay. So we'll leave that as it is. And let's get started on this next section. Uh, these sections are probably going to get easier now. So this looks quite an easy section. It looks like a one column section with a testimonial in. So we'll create a new column and we'll do what we always do and um, we'll set it to 10 for now. We might add some more padding in a bit and we're going to drag a testimonial into the section. You can see that that's what they've used there. I use this widget quite a bit so I don't know if they've set that as like a minimum um, height, they probably have, so I'll do that too. I think that looks about right. Uh, let's put in a uh, testimonial, so didn't actually give it a name, um, super awesome web agency. Super awesome web agency were as you might think. Super awesome, just like my new website. A glowing testimonial there. Let's just leave that uh, the default values and um, select the default image from the template. And let's style the testimonial so that it matches. I'm not going to need to do a lot here. We just need to make the text look a bit nicer in terms of its alignment. So we'll just use a, uh, a break that we used, same thing we used up here. And we'll put it after think, I think, so that it just sits a bit nicer. And we didn't do any global styling for this because um, it's probably not something that we we'll use a ton. With stuff like this, I generally will style um, the widget, like a testimonial widget, I'll style it once and then I'll save it for use elsewhere on the site. Um, often you'll wanna use different styling to your default styling so that the testimonial stands out to the uh, styles you use across your website. Like in this instance, we're using an italic font, some different sizing, some different weight, etc. So we'll style it ourselves once and then we can use it uh, in different templates and places across the website if we need to. So let's make it match 27351. So let's go typography, 27 pixels. 300 weight, 51 line height. You notice that the values that I'm putting in to the editor are overriding the global styles that we set up, which is as it's supposed to be. So that's due to uh, specificity, meaning we have global styles that we set up. And unless we say otherwise, the global styles will apply. So, you know, body text will apply to most text elements. Heading text will inherit from heading texts. But we still want to be able to override stuff for specific sections like we're doing now. And to do that, you just, you know, simply type in different values. And the values you put in on the individual elements will override those set globally at a higher level because this is more specific than at the global level. We're saying this specific testimonial I want to have this font size, this weight, um, you know, this line height. So because you're being more specific, uh, Elementor and WordPress and HTML and CSS will know 
to use this styling on your testimonial. I don't want to get too techy on that, but I just think that's an important thing to grasp that you can always override the stuff you set up at the start on specific widgets um, in Elemental, which is what we're doing here to match this up. I think we need to do two more things to match it up. We need to set the style to italic and we need to change the color of the font slightly. Then that matches up. One more thing, we'll add speech bubbles. And that looks an awful lot like the H4 tag. So maybe we can do that in an easy way. I don't think so within the um, widget though. Let's just um, 19300 and there's the color. So let's change the, um, the name, 19 pixels, 300 weight, text color. Just double checking that I actually um, set Montserrat as the, uh... yeah I did, okay. Set that up as my global font for the body stuff. So because I've set Montserrat as the font for the body globally, basically everything is going to be in Montserrat. So you don't really have to worry about setting your font on every element, which is good. 319.29. Okay. There's the, is that a 300 font weight? Yeah, it's just Montserrat rather than the other one. And this is 313 pixels, the title. So let's set that font size to 300. Oh, what am I doing? 313 pixels, wasn't it? Yeah, 17 pixels. And we've got an RGB A value here as opposed to a hex code. Don't worry, that's just as easy to paste in. Just paste in the value there, like so. And I think that's good. Looks like we've got some sort of background color, I think, on the um, section. I think we definitely have Maybe my eyes are um, deceiving me. No, I think it's just the um, border there. Let me just double check in the template. Just so we can make sure it does match. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, there is a, um, my color picker was just, uh, should pick it up if I click on the right part of the page, probably. Yeah, I mean, it's getting a different value. Um, I'll just grab the right one. Sometimes you've got to use the color picker a few times to get the right color when you have um, backgrounds like this where it's quite faint just for speeding things up. I'll just grab it from there. Doesn't look quite right. Anyway, I think that's uh, is there an overlay. No. Let's just make it um, a bit lighter. Just dragging the, um, that looks a bit. 
I was just uh, dragging the um, color picker there so that we've got something that looks a bit closer to the design. And I think, yeah, that's good. I think um, that's good for now. So let's move on to the next section here. And let's start creating this section here. So these sections are all quite similar. We've got three sections here with a similar layout. Uh, reversed side to side so to start with it goes left to right then it goes right to left and then left to right again so if we create one section we'll then be able to duplicate it and simply switch over the elements in each column so let's just start off by creating a two column section so you can do that two ways so you can select two columns there or from a one column section you can just duplicate the column like so um, let's just have a look looks like it's got a fixed height again so we'll try and guess what it is without looking too much into the template let's just say it's got a minimum height of 400 looks like a good place to start and then on the left we've got a divider heading text block another heading so we've already styled one divider I think it's the same um, divider throughout yeah it looks like it's the same divider so there's no point um, redoing that so we can simply duplicate the divider from there and drag it down into this column we're going to want to make sure that uh, it's left aligned though, rather than being center aligned. Okay, might want to increase the percentage width on that one actually though. Um, let's say 20, that looks a bit closer to the percentage width. Then we'll add a heading. We'll make it H2, it's done that by default, which is great. Um, kind of running out of copy for this. Let's see. Um, let's just copy the uh, copy from here because it's not really important. So we'll copy that copy there. And then what else have we got? A text block. You notice how the elements are inheriting the style that we set up earlier. So it's really super quick to build this row. As you can see, you know, it looks basically identical. It's just inheriting all that styling we set up earlier we need one more element here we need our h6 which is our read more there we'll just change that to read more and that's basically done already um, you know that's rapid isn't it let's just grab the color of the background section and we'll apply that here like so so we've now got the background color added anything to do is to get the icon from here and put that in the right hand section so we're going to drag and drop an image and I'm going to find that icon it's a paintbrush type thing this one here I'm going to set it to full I'm going to update the page. I'm going to preview it. Okay, it's a good start. Uh, this section's looking pretty good. A few differences though, in terms of the way the text sits. I think we need a break here. We need some spacing between the two columns and we need to reduce the size of the icon. Let's see what it's displaying at, if we can see that. 288 by 288. Um, I think a better way to do this would be, I often like to just set the image to its full size and then play around with the width, like this. Um, let's see if this works. So I'm just setting it to be 
of its column that it sits in at any one time. It's a good way for it to um, kind of scale up. I think maybe even 50% would be fine. And I'll show you how you can create that gap between the columns right now because it looks a bit cramped at the moment without the gap between the columns. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the section and go to layout and then column gap. We're going to click on, we'll try extended to start with and we'll refresh preview. Okay. So it looks, the gap looks better. Make the gap slightly wider. Um, we need a bit of padding on the sides, I think. Because this content, I know what we'll do. So let's just um, save time and look at how the minimum height is about the same. Boxed. Yeah. Okay. Let's. We'll just do something similar. Instead of a thousand, we'll just set it to a boxed width. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. So all I've done there is uh, I've come into the layout for the section. I've set it to boxed and we've set a fixed width for the section because it's uh, set to boxed rather than full width. It's basically just constraining um, the size of the section so that instead of the content being more spread out than it was, it's a little bit more pushed in, a little more constrained so that it looks a bit more like the design. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just trying to compare it with the template. Yeah, I think the only thing um, looks different is, is there a bottom border there on the uh, section above? I think there's a border on the bottom bit here of this section. Just adding a border on the, um, I don't know why that's come out like that. I've only put the uh, border on the bottom. Oh, I don't need the border radius. Just need a border. Nope, do not link together. So one pixel there. And I want to make it the same color as the border that I had up here. So I'm going to grab that. The little touches like this can make quite a difference in how the design shapes up. So where's the border gone down here? Okay, there we go. I think that looks a bit cleaner. Okay, cool. So we've built this section here. Um, experience design at scale, that all looks good. We didn't even need to put the break in, it's kind of done it for us. I think that looks fine. Um, there is a border there as well, so let me just put that in quickly. And then we can duplicate this section. Let's put a one pixel border on the bottom of there. Fresh once more.
Okay. Now let's duplicate the row. We can do that by right clicking and clicking duplicate, going on to the section below. And all that we need to do now that we've styled this section for the first time, we don't want to do all that again. We simply want to uh, move the contents around. So we're going to move the icon from the right to the left, and move the text from the left to the right, like so. So move everything um, from the left to the right. Super easy now that we've uh, done most of the hard work. And I think this one, second one didn't have a border, common design pattern to have a background color on one section and then to not have a background color on the next section to contrast. So I'm just turning off the background color there. So this is coming along quite quickly now that we've got these first bits done. We'll just copy the copy it's got there into there. Refresh the page. Okay. I think we need a bit of padding. So set minimum height 400 there, minimum height 400 there. But I think we still need some padding. Actually, we could just make sure stuff's positioned in the middle of the section. We're just setting the vertical align to middle as well as the column position to middle just so that everything within both sections is center aligned vertically, just so that it looks neater. I think it's looking really good. Yeah, it just needs some um, padding. Hopefully I can grab that now by using the inspect tool. Remember that's right click inspect. It's not too techy. Don't worry if this stuff's a bit confusing and a bit daunting, you don't really need to do it. I'm just uh, trying to grab the padding from here so that we can put the same amount of padding on our rows. Maybe they've put margin. Let me just do it the quick way. Actually, I can just kind of guess it. Let's just go to here. We'll add 20 pixels on the top, 20 pixels on the bottom, 20 on the top, 20 on the bottom. And as I mentioned, I usually like to put some padding on the left and right as well whenever there's row con whenever there's content um, that has a chance of coming near the edges. So I'm just going to update the page now. Too worried about it being absolutely the same. If I can get it looking quite close quickly, that'll be good. Okay. I think we just need a tiny bit more padding on this uh, row due to the way the columns are set up. As you can see, um, there's a bit more padding on that one above. So we'll just refresh the page. Yeah, it looks a bit more uniform now. Okay, now all that we need to do, we've got three of these sections, so this one's gonna be even easier. We're just gonna duplicate the left aligned section now. So now that we've created one that's right aligned and one that's left aligned, we can simply duplicate this section here and then drag it below the second section to create the final section, like so. Uh, let's just update the icons as well, so they're using the right icons. So we've got a computer and a tablet there. I'll insert that. And we've got a computer with chat boxes here, which is this.
I'm going to go ahead and update the page. Okay, looks good. So we've got three sections now that look basically the same as what we have in the template. I actually like it a little bit uh, more like this, actually a bit more um, centered, slightly um, narrower sections. It looks good. Now we've got two more sections to create on the home page. So we've got this section here, which is uh, it looks like a one column section with uh, some intersections where we've got icon boxes so we'll do that and then the call to action section is going to be quite easy so let's do the more difficult section first i mean you know nothing's really too difficult uh, with elementor but uh, let's dive into this one here so i'll put some padding like i always do then we start with a heading, center align it. I think this heading was slightly different to our H2. Let me just check. I've forgotten what we set our H2 at, so now it's the same. Okay, so nothing to do there then. It's gonna need a bit more padding though. If you look there, they've got Bit more padding at the top, maybe it's 60, looks about right. There's a divider there which we've already set up, so it's just going to be a case of duplicating the divider. Then we'll drag it down to beneath the heading, we'll center it like so. I think we might need to reduce the percentage width. Remember, this is. Um, a percentage width is a percentage of the column that is inside that it's going to take up. So it sets 20%. Yeah, so at the moment 20 is a bit high. Set it down to 10%. Should be about right. Okay, it's looking good. Yeah, it's coming together really quickly. Um, is there a border there? There's a border, yeah. That's all good. Right, so now to create what we've got here, we're going to need to use an intersection in Elementor, which is a little bit different to the regular section we've been using where we're just clicking plus to create a section. We're going to drag and drop an intersection, a section within a section. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to add a little bit of spacing because there's a gap here. Just set that to something small, like 20 pixels. And now let's start doing this. So these look like icon boxes, which are a built-in widget to Elementor. So that's going to save some time. We can search for the icon box widget and simply drag and drop it. Now it looks like they've got their icons to the left and the heading and the text to the right. But again, that's going to be easy to do. Built into the icon box, we can just left align the icon for some reason our heading is not showing up primary color content probably due to something we did with our um global styling but we want to overwrite it anyway because we don't have anything like this in our global styles so first thing we'll do is we'll change the color on the headings like that and then we will set it to these values so I don't think I need to do that it's all done globally but um, let's see so 27 pixels there 544 line height so we'll just do that okay so there's the heading done this doesn't need doing because it looks, I think the only thing that it needs doing actually is decreasing the font size. We just uh, 
do that. That looks basically identical. And then the icon, we'll set that by going to content and trying to find this in the icon box. So looks like some kind of, that might be an image actually. No, I think that's an image. So we might need the image box instead. I'm sure that'll be an image. Mm, yeah, there it is. There's the image. Okay, so we'll just do the same things that we just did quickly. We'll left align it. We'll set the, uh, the heading so it matches. Seven. And we need to change the color so that we can see it. Twenty-seven five hundred weight. Forty-four line height. That's that done. And then we just need to do the same thing again to the description typography, where we'll set that to fifteen pixels like so and we need to add a bit of space to the right of the icon because I can see that they've done that so I'm coming into style image spacing we'll double that to 30 pixels refresh the page and see how it's looking I think the spacing looks fine but I think we've got our icons slightly bigger than they're being displayed over there. So we just decrease it marginally to 25. I think they've got, I think besides that, looks very similar. I think they've got a fixed width section again. I'll just set it to the same width as the section above and see how that looks. Yeah, I actually prefer having it uniform or the rows the same width, to be honest. So I'm just going to keep it like that. And all I've done again is I've gone to content width and I've set it to boxed. You can set it to full width if you want, and the whole section will expand across the page. But I'm wanting to have it boxed at 960 just like my other sections up there so once we've done one icon box let's just make sure it all matches so I haven't got to change the styling it's always best to get one of them absolutely right when it comes to these multiple icon boxes like this because if you get one right you can duplicate it um, the last thing you want to do is to have to go back and do lots of little changes across lots of the icons and the whole point of this is to make everything as easy as possible for you so we're just going to make sure we get one of them absolutely right first it's basically perfect apart from the line height which I'll change it just needs to go down to oh, not that 26 and for this one I want to check it on mobile before I start duplicating I think we we didn't do responsive for our H2s earlier. We did our body text. We didn't do our H2s. So now's a good time to do that, actually, instead of coming back to it. I'm going to go back to site settings. We want to make our H2s responsive in terms, you know, we want to make them look good on mobile devices. So we'll come in here. And we're going to set a value that looks good on mobile and we can watch it change in front of us because all of these are H2s so let's try 30 I think that's what we set for the H1 but I just think that's a good value for that and look how everything changes as we do that every H2 changes at the same time it just saves so much time building your websites like this you haven't got to go back and do everything bit by bit you know your whole template your whole website can change you know doing that making that one change so that's all taken care of while i'm here i need to set responsive value for that actually for 
the testimonial block and then we're good. So I'll exit the site settings now. So I can go back into my actual editor. I might just set this value to 30 as well to keep things the same. Actually 30 is a bit big for that because there's too much text. So we'll go with, uh, we'll go with 18, but we're going to need to add the break doesn't look that great or mobile there. Um, we'll leave that though, because I've shown you how to duplicate sections and remove the breaks where you insert a break on desktop and you want to make it look good on mobile. You can simply duplicate uh, the element, the text block, hide one on desktop, show one on mobile. I'll leave that for now because I've already gone through that in the video. Don't want to spend too much time on that. So let's come back down here. This was all looking good on um, mobile. And it's looking good on desktop. So now it's just going to be a case of duplicating the icon boxes. It's going to be quite a quick process. We'll copy and paste in the right text here. The rest of it's dummy text. Ah, one thing, uh, spacing between the columns is going to be important. We're just going to put an extended column gap because that's what we used above. And it's good to keep things uniform, you know, use the same settings throughout the page if possible, unless you're a designer and you know what you're doing and you're, um, you know, you've got a specific design to implement. Amazingly responsive. So we're going to change the heading. I'm going to find that icon, which is a uh, mobile phone with some cogs. Easy peasy. Now we're going to simply duplicate that and duplicate that. Actually, no, we won't. We'll delete these. What we'll do instead is we'll duplicate the whole section just so that we can keep things nice and tidy. And I'll find that icon, which is a globe. There. Find this one for community builder, which is a mailbox. And we'll duplicate the section one more time because we've got three lots. Uh, plugins is this image. That's some sort of tablet with a pencil, it looks like, something like that. Where is it? There. Let's click update. Preview the page as always. See how it's looking. It's looking good. I think one thing that we can do is to, do we want to center align or top align it? Looks like they've got stuff center aligned in their uh, columns. So let's do that. Let's hit vertical line middle on each section and the content will be, be positioned in the middle of the section, as you can guess. Looks a bit better, like that. Actually, I think I'm going to change that. I'm going to say top so that everything has a bit more space. And I'm gonna oh, gonna make one change. I'm gonna add some padding to the top and the bottom of each section. Like so. 
and refresh. Okay, I think that looks a bit better. Okay, that section is done. We've now just got the call to action section on the home page. Bear in mind the home page is always going to be the hardest and the longest page in any website that you do. Typically, you'll build the home page to start with because that involves setting up your global styles and the home page is like a storefront for your business or whatever your website's for. You know, it's got to capture the user's interest. It's got to tell them what you do, why you do it. And it's usually a more complicated design when it comes to web design. The home pages are usually the biggest, most complex designs. Not always, but most of the time. So just bear in mind that the home page is usually going to take the longest because there's a, a lot of setup. You're creating elements, widgets, and sections that can then be duplicated and used across other parts of your website. But anyway, let's crack on and do the last section, the CTA section, which looks pretty easy. It's just a heading, a subheading, and a button with a background. So let's give it a minimum height because the template seems to be doing that. Let's set a background. Um, and it's, I think it's the same background. Yeah, it is. And we want to position it center center. So absolutely center the image in the section as opposed to, you know, the other options size, we want it to cover the section. So we'll set that and then we'll set up the overlay, which we've already done here. So we'll just grab it from here. That was the color and we set it to 0 0.89. So let's paste the color in. Oh, uh, down here, sorry, in background overlay. 0 0.89. There's the overlay done. Got a heading, a subheading, and a button. So let's grab a heading, center align it to match. It says make a beautiful website. It looks like our H2, to be honest. I think it, yeah, it is just in white text. That's easy. You can just do that. And a subheading. Center align it. I don't think we've set one up for that. We'll do that now because that's quite useful to have for these uh, rows with background images. Okay, where are we? Site settings. Just do that quickly. I think we can make it H5. So select the font. The font size is 21. The line height is 32. There's the color. The weight is 300. So that's all done. Let's update that. Go back to the editor. And we'll just drag and drop a new heading so that it inherits the styling like so. Copy and paste the text. Refresh the page. Okay, shaping up nicely. I don't actually think we need a break there. I suppose we could. Um, yeah, we'll put a break in. I would put it here. Now, if we drag and drop a button, we shouldn't have to do any styling really. It should inherit. Ah, the one thing I forgot on the button was to capitalize the text. 
So let me just do that. Remember, we want to do it in the site settings. The save clicks. We do it once. We haven't got to do it again. Uh, transform uppercase done. Let's exit that. Click update. And there's a bit of spacing beneath the subheading and the button. So if we add that in, the page should be done. It's about 30 pixels. So I'll click update. I'm going to refresh one more time. Okay, looks good. So there's our CTA section. Bearing in mind, it looks slightly different because we've got different font. Um, but yeah, it looks good to go. Let me just check that. Responsive view looks fine. It's inherited the uh, fonts we set up earlier in the global settings, the responsive settings. I think that all looks fine, to be honest. We might just want to add a little bit of padding, which I'll now do. Yeah, that looks good. It's a bit better. And that's the home page done. Let's just check. Uh, one thing I'll do is I'll add a bit of um, padding down here. I think I put 60 at the top. So I'll put the same value at the bottom. Just check it looks okay on mobile as well. Yep. Okay, all good. Okay, so now that we've got the home page out of the way, let's move on to the other parts of the website. And um, we're going to look at some global parts now. So parts that will be present on all the pages on the website. Specifically, we're going to look at the header and footer because they're quite important parts of the website. I want to show you how easy they are to create an Elementor and I'm going to start with the header. So we're going to be moving away from the Elementor theme builder briefly and we're going to be going into the new theme builder, moving away from the Elementor editor, sorry, and we're going to be going into the Elementor theme builder. And to get into the theme builder, there's a couple of ways you can get in there. So the first is if you're actually using Elementor on a page, you can click the uh, burger menu icon up here first of all to access settings. You can just click theme builder. Second way, if you're in the WordPress backend, you can hover over Elementor, hover over templates, sorry, and click theme builder. You'll come to this page and then it says, try it now. You can click try it now. The easiest way is usually to just go in from the Elementor builder. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. So this is the Elementor theme builder. It's replacing what used to be the old templating system where you would build templates. I mean, it's, it's still similar, but it's um, cleaner and easier and it's a uh, better way of building sites, I think. So let's start with the header because that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to click on to header. There's no templates currently, so let's add a new one. We're going um, off path here because there was just the one template for this particular design in the Elementor template library. There's not a full set. So it's going to be up to us to make what we think would fit in terms of the header and footer and the other pages. So um, what I'm going to do is pick a menu that I think will fit, just something simple. There's one I usually go for around here somewhere. I think it might be this one. Yeah, this is the uh, header template that I usually like to use to start with because it's really simple. It's got a button on the right hand column. It's got a menu in the middle and a logo on the left, which is kind of the simple layout that I like. So I've inserted that now and straight away you'll see that the button is inheriting the button styles we set up. Um, there are a couple of differences though. It's got the, the color there. 
uh, it's inheriting that from the global styles. But if we actually click into the button, the template itself, the button has some styles set. So they're overriding the stuff we set up globally. So probably all we need to do is just clear out anything in here and let it inherit from our global styles. So I'm just removing and setting stuff back to default because I want to um, keep it uniform and use our global styling. So once we clear out this stuff, I don't think there's much more sets. Um, okay. All right. That's good. Now uh, let's change the text of the button. We don't want it to say donate now. That's probably more appropriate for perhaps a charity. Let's change it to say, uh, uh, let's talk some generic kind of contact us link. We'll leave that alone at the moment. It's aligned to the right. Uh, I'll leave that as it is for now. Uh, the menu. So what we want to do on here is we want to clear out all of their styling to start with. Let's just see how it looks. I'm just setting all this stuff back to default because I want to, um, I want it to inherit my global styling initially that we set up. We may well change this in a minute, but I just want to see how it looks. Clear clear and because it's a menu we need to clear out this um, hover styles and the active styles I think that's basically everything in terms of the site logo we don't actually have one for this um, kind of made up website so let's just publish it for now and before we do that I'm going to click on this button here, go to display conditions, display on the entire site. I'll click save and close. It's now been published. So if we now refresh, we should see the header, which we do see, but we don't see a menu, but that's because we haven't created a menu yet, but that's really easy to do. So let's just do that now. Come over into menus. So let's just call this main menu. Clear out the existing links. We'll just put some uh, dummy links in to start with. I always like to have some dummy links in there just to, so the menu doesn't look a bit silly. Oh, okay. Let's just add some links. We're just putting a hash at the moment in place of an actual link, which we can um, put in later. Custom links. Uh, we have a button for let's talk, don't we? So we'll just put about services, about services, blog, that'll do. And we'll just save the menu. We don't need to worry about display location or anything like this. We just need to have a menu for the template to actually use. Because if you click on the nav menu here, there are no menus in your site. So if we refresh the header, it's now pulled in the only menu we've got, which is good. And it's inheriting um, our styling again, which is good. Now we can see what we need to change in terms of styling to get it to match our design. We basically just need to change the uh, active effect for when you hover over stuff. So I thought I cleared this out actually, but um, it's kind of a one color design at the moment. I wonder what color we could set that to. Um, I'm going to use 
a tool to suggest a color scheme can't really think what would be a good accent color right now so I'll use this little tool paleton we'll just use a darker shade of the brand color because I think it looks quite good with just the one color so yeah that looks okay so now we'll click update we'll refresh our page not bad so I mean that works for me this is quite a simple design that's a simple menu um, I know what we can do we can use one of these logos for our actual logo let's try and use one that is kind of neutral dark side studios looks okay that's pulling in the actual site logo so I don't generally like to do that maybe because I'm uh, looking for a sort of quick solution I'll often just drag and drop an image in rather than using the um, site logo I'll put that in there I'll set it to full and then on the width I usually just do this so it sort of matches something that I'm happy with so I'm setting a percentage width so any logos that are a bit more that's fine I think just leave that it doesn't have to look perfect okay now let's um, just quickly look at how our mobile looks on mobile devices because we need it to be okay on mobile so the buttons being hidden on mobile okay um, so the logo looks a bit too small for mobile maybe we'll set that to 75% like that and for the mobile menu we need to change the styling on this button so that it uses our branded colors so toggle button is this let's set it so that it uses our brand colors and on hover we'll use or on hover color like so um that looks okay but I guess we could also change the background color on uh, the drop down menu background color where is that being managed hmm. should be No, it's the main menu, I think. Yeah, it's there. So just do that. Actually, that's a deeper shade. We we'll use our brand violet color, medium violet red. Okay, that's fine. And what we'll do quickly, because the button is being hidden, because I, I think that doesn't really work on mobile, we're just going to create another menu for our mobile menu. Easiest thing to do is to simply create a mobile menu. And we're going to use the responsive tools that we used in the previous video so that we have one menu on desktop and one on mobile. the easiest way to do this because it's a small menu and a small site so we can just have two menus what do we have in the menu services and blog in that order save that menu and now what I'll do is duplicate that and this one We'll hide on desktop and tablet 
and this one we'll hide on mobile so there's our desktop menu and for this we're going to use I might need to refresh the page actually we're going to use the mobile menu And one thing I forgot to do in the mobile menu was we're going to add a text link for Let's Talk instead of having the button. So it's a bit more mobile friendly. And then on mobile devices, what am I in now? This is the main menu. Oh, I didn't save that, obviously. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a contact method because otherwise we wouldn't be able to be contacted by users on mobile devices, which would be a bit of a usability faux pas. So now the users can contact us easily on mobile and desktop. On desktop, they've got the big Let's Talk button. On mobile, they have a text link. So it just looks nicer, it's cleaner, and it's taking up less of the screen. So boom, there's the header done nice and simple I think that was about 14 minutes nice and quick for the header the header and footer I think of really easy parts to create on your website with Elementor just super easy even if you wanted to um, you know customize it a bit more I find them to be uh, really easy really simple to manage anyway there's the header let's go back into the theme builder now and let's do a footer We'll go in the other way this time. We'll go to footer. We'll add a new template. Um, where are we? Blocks. Where's my footer I like to use? Okay. What I like to do generally is to use this footer. And I'll just strip out the top section with the subscribe uh, thing there, uh, the email sign up, sorry, free trial. And then we're left with just a really simple uh, footer with four columns, which can be reduced to one or two or three, as many columns as you need. It's just a really simple layout. It's nice and clean. And it will be really easy for us to customize. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to, what's this, an inner section. I'm going to reduce the padding on the top. Now that I've got rid of the sign up, how much padding is on the, oh, what did I just do? Undo. Don't know what I did there. Okay, there's 90 and 90 on that, 50 and 50 on, it looks like a bit too much padding at the top, so I'm just going to reduce it a little bit. This is a really small starter site, so we're probably not going to need four columns at all, actually. This might have been a, not have been a good choice, but I'll set it up as if we have lots of content and pages to populate. So let's trim it down to three columns, so I'm going to right click on a column, click delete. The columns will then automatically resize themselves to use up the space available. For the background color, I want to be consistent and I want to use the same color that we've been using up there. It might not be uh, gray enough. No, I think it looks okay. And we're going to need to change the typography. Here, the, the uh, template might have its own typography. Oh no, it's set to default. Um, I might leave the size alone. Yeah, I might leave the sizing alone because you know the template's pretty well done. And I think it's okay to have your footer and header use different font sizes where appropriate. Let me just check that the text is yeah, it's using Montserrat. It's set to default, so it's inheriting the Montserrat font. So that's our global font. So there's probably really not a lot to do here. Let's just 
um, move the columns around. So I want about first, and let's just say team. Blog careers. Let's just imagine we've got all that stuff. About services, web design, web development. That's fine, I'll just leave that, I think. Change this to contact. Change the content here. Hello at superawesomeagency.com. You can pick telephone number here. Like so. And then to actually link these items to where they need to go, come in here to where it's got link. You just put like so, forward slash team, forward slash what we do. I imagine this is what the uh, URL structure would be like. Forward slash careers. And we do it this way instead of inserting a menu item because you just have more control over the design. So, you know, you can, um, set an icon for each list item if you wanted to you can control the text on each individual item it's just more styling options than just dropping a uh, menu widget in there i think um, easier to, to juggle as well than having sort of three sub menus that's creating a lot of menus within the back end so i think it looks fine to be honest let's just check it on mobile now and do some mobile optimizing so obviously on a mobile device couple of things we're not going to want so much padding first of all the top and the bottom we won't add double padding so we've already got padding on the sides and I don't think it looks very good because we've just got three columns so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set every column to 100% width and it's going to be done this way oh. mostly looks good apart from looks like this column's got some padding on the top for some reason just take that off there but now we need a little bit of space between each sub menu so what we'll do is looks like there's padding there as well on the uh, column, which I'll just take off. Spacer there, social icons. I'm just going to add a little bit of um, I'll place a little bit of padding back on um, each menu block. Not a load though, just a small amount. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay, that's looking good. It looks good on uh, mobile now, it looks good on desktop. So I think we can go to display conditions as we did before, include the entire site. Click save and close and we'll publish. Let's refresh the home page. We should now have a footer and a menu, which looks great. One thing that's going to annoy me now is if the header and the footer text are the same size. Okay, let's change that. So in our header styles, we need to set it to 18, 32 and uppercase. So let's do that. uppercase 18 pixels 32 pixels line height 
500 weight. Update. Looks good there. Let's see what's going to be appropriate on mobile. So probably something like 15, I think it already is. 15. I think we need to go to... It's not a drop down, it's the... Mm. Oh, it must be the drop down. So... Yeah, it is a drop down, sorry, because it's in the um, toggle button. Um, drop down typography. What's going on there? Let's just refresh. Style. Oh no, yeah, okay, so <laughs> I think we just need to refresh the page. So it is the main menu, as I initially thought. Now we can set it as we want it. 500. Uh, I actually think that's fine on mobile for a menu because it needs to be big and easy to use. So we'll just use the same. Actually, no, that's a, let's just put it a little bit smaller. So 13. Okay, looks good. There's the header done, and it should now be consistent with the footer. Yeah, I think that looks better. So that matches the footer. Header's done, footer's done, home page is done. Coming along really quickly now. So now we can move on to some of the other pages. We'll do an about page, we'll do a services page, blog, and contact. And I think that should be good for our little imaginary agency website. So let's go ahead and make a new page for about. Click add new. About. We'll edit it with Elementor. And what we're going to do is we're going to make things easy for ourselves, and we're going to start taking sections from our home page and using them on our about page. So this call to action block we're going to use as the basis of our sort of hero block on our pages. This hero block is a bit bigger. I think it's fine for a home page, but on inner pages, I would like a smaller version of the hero section. So let's grab it from. Close down our header and menu. We can get it there actually. Simplest way to grab it is to scroll down to it, click on it, copy, and then in this box, paste, like so. I'm just going to change that to about. We get rid of the button because we don't need it and um, learn about super awesome agency. Just put in some uh, generic copy there. It's already uh, optimized for mobile devices because remember we optimized it on the home page. Boom, done. Well, not done, but <laughs> we've done the top section. Now let's add section. I don't really know what I'm going to put here, so I'm just going to try and um, think quickly. Uh, we'll do some simple sections. These are two column rows. We'll create a one column row, but we'll use the same kind of setup to keep things consistent. First thing I'll do is I'll add a bit of um, padding. And these are set at 960 with a minimum height of 400, so I'll do that. 
960. Minimum height 400. Let's find a heading, a H2. Let's center it. And let's say meet the team. Let's put a little bit of spacing beneath it. Let's say 20 pixels because we've used that before. the widget I'm looking for. Um, let's make it ourselves. Let's include an intersection. We just want to include some pictures and some bios of three people. So we're making a three column intersection. Column gap where you've been using extended I believe. So we'll use that. I'm going to drag and drop some images. We use the image provided in the theme. No, actually, I want to get one correct first of all. Let's try the image box actually. Might make things easier. Image size four. Like so, content, team member, let's strip out any of their styling that they've got, typography, title, title's there, it's not showing for some reason, I don't know why, I think the image should be full width actually. Let's see why the title's not showing. What's going on with that? If there's nothing there, it should be inheriting our... Maybe it just needs resetting. Templates broken our global styling. So we'll just reset it. Oh, I know why. Depends on what the elements title HTML tag. There we go. We had to set the HTML tag for the title. Uh, remember that we set the global styling up on those specific tags because it was set to a H3. I don't think we've got styling on a H3 or the H3 is uh, a white element for use on a colored background. It might be the CTA one. I can't quite remember, but okay. All good. So it's super basic, super clean. Looks good. Do we need any spacing? Spacing set to 15. I quite like it like that, to be honest. Might even reduce it down. I think it looks okay like that. Let's see what it looks like on mobile. It looks fine on mobile because uh, the heading is inheriting our global styling and we already mobile optimized it. And that's body text because it's inheriting the styling from the body text that we set up. So it's all good, I think. So you can see how quick it is when you do things the easy way like this. So now I'm just going to delete one column, duplicate one, delete one, duplicate one. And, you know, if you were creating an about us page for real, you can now just change out the images and put in the correct text. You've styled one image box you know, so that you're happy with it when it's done, just duplicate it. That's, you know, much easier than sort of starting and stopping, etc. You know, get one right and then duplicate it. It's all about cutting down the time it takes to do things. So let's update the page. We'll preview and see how it's looking. It looks good, but I think it needs a little bit more space in between. So we'll go for wider. And we'll hit refresh. Looks good. I think that's too much spacing beneath that actually. I don't even think we need that. Just get rid of that. Click update. 
hit refresh. Yeah, I think that looks better. It's just a simple, clean page. Uh, what other sort of stuff could we put there? Within the widgets. No, we'll keep that as it is. We'll just keep it simple for now. I was going to include a map, but I'm going to do that on the uh, contact page. What I want to show you how to do now is to build a blog page, which is more useful for you to see how to do, I think. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a blog page. Blog. So I've created a new page, but I don't have any posts, I don't think. There might be like one sample post. Let's create a couple of sample posts. We'll just make sure we've got three. Is a good amount to work with. Okay, now we can create a blog page. We'll copy our hero block again. We can save it as a template or a global element, but I just honestly think it's easier to do it this way. Paste it in change the content to blog and we're going to create a new one column row to start with we'll set the same sort of padding that we usually do and we're going to look for the post widgets there's a few of them I want to grab this one which is posts. I want to drag and drop that onto the page, which I've just done. Let's set some images actually, so we can see what it might look like. That's quite a big image, so that'll probably work. Set a featured image on each of them. so that we can see how our blog page will look. Done. Let's, let's publish the page and refresh it. Cool, so now it's pulling in the featured images, which is what I wanted. Let's play around with the post widget a little bit. So this is the classic skin. There's three skins, full content, not really relevant for um, a blog page, more relevant for placing, uh, I don't know actually where you would use that. I haven't used that skin yet, but I'm sure there are some good uses for it. I usually use cards like so. We can use classical cards, but I'm going to go for cards. Let's customize a little bit. And I want to remove the author image to start with, avatar. I want to remove the dates and the no comments down there. So that will be in the metadata usually, here it is, date, comments. Okay, that looks fine. And I wanna remove the badge as well. Okay, that looks pretty slim. It's already inheriting the styling I set up on the heading element, which is a H3 title HTML tag. Let's set it to a H, which now looks good. Just check if I want to read more, keep that as it is. Okay, I think that looks fine. Let's see what it looks like 
on mobile. Looks good as well because the typography is all already responsive. The spacing's all good, padding's all good. Okay, that looks good. One thing that you often have on these blog pages is a um, email subscribe box. So I'll put one in. It might not be um, very well designed, but I'll show you how you can do that. And we're going to just want, generally you just want the email, don't you? So we're just going to reduce it down to one field, the email field. And what have we got? An email and a submit button. Okay, so what are we doing here? Email. Just keep that as it is. Don't want the label. And we want both of them to be on the same line because it looks a bit, you know, that's not usually how these email subscribe forms look, is it? So the way we do that is through column width. If we set this to 50, they should both pop onto the same line because, oh, I think we need to set this submit to 50 as well, actually. First, yeah, there we go. Um, I don't know if that will uh, look weird, actually. It's still quite big, but let me just... see what it looks like it looks okay as I said it's um, the designs nothing fancy um, I'm not a designer but I think that looks okay so it's a one field sign up form let's change what the submit button actually says so change it to subscribe like so the forms are so easy in Elementor so so easy we don't need these actions after submit we're going to collect submissions and email is going to be sent here's where you can change where the email is actually sent so subject newsletter sign up for example it's already going to send you don't need to play around with that bit the from email you can change that you can cc in people bcc people i've got other videos obviously on creating forms quite a long one so you can watch that if you want to see how forms work i think that's good so nice simple blog page subscribe for more tips we've designed how the blog posts are laid out if we had more blog posts, obviously the user could scroll down or they could use pagination to go on to the next page. I think that's good for now. Nice and simple. We'll just double check it on uh, mobile view. That looks fine on mobile as well. The typography is all responsive. Looks good. Okay, nice and simple. So what have we got? We've got about, we've got blog. Um, don't really know what I put on a services page because I have to come up with services stuff. Um, let me have a go, something quick. Let's go back to desktop view. We'll copy our hero block from there call this services and I think we'll copy what we did here actually I think on the home page there's a services block there is yeah so we could copy now we'll make a new one we'll make a new one based on that one I 
Don't really think we need services again. Uh, we haven't been using our dividers though on certain blocks, so let's use those. Because they're quite useful. Put one here. No, not there. Put one there. And we'll have one on our new. Just copying and pasting it in from the home page. We'll have one here too. And we're going to put in an inner section. It's going to be a two column section with some padding. And on the about page, we use the wider um, column gap. So we'll use that here. For services, we're going to use icon boxes instead of image boxes. And yeah, I need to set that so we can see the heading. Should just say web design. Let's find an appropriate icon. Um, huh. Let's just use a paintbrush for now. Let's make sure that the paintbrush is on brand using our brand colors. So go style, primary color set, like so. I think there's a lot of padding going on for some reason. It's this icon box. It's giving, um, must have its own padding or margins. It's going to set the padding to zero on the columns. Well, I'll just do one column to start with and then duplicate just so there's not too much padding on mobile. I think that looks better, like so. suppose we should include a link like so and then we'll duplicate it for web development let's just say web dev because I don't really like the way it spans multiple lines and we oh I said I was going to Duplicate the column, didn't I? There. Doesn't look like there's any. Oh, I've turned off the padding, haven't I? So I've destroyed the column gap. So what we'll do put some padding on the sides. I need to change it on mobile. There's too much padding there on mobile. Okay. And I'll duplicate the section. So I think we had one more. It's a good icon for development. Um, code, I guess. Code icon. We'll use a phone for that. We'll check out the responsive view. It looks fine apart from the fact that we need some spacing between the columns. 
I think that looks fine. And we could probably also copy the call to action block from the home page and put that on the service page as well. I think that's our service page done. It's really basic, but I suppose that's all it really needs to do. So just tell people what we do, our imaginary agency. I'm going to go back into the menu now and I'm going to start about service blog. Yeah, those are the three things. I want to start connecting up the menus so they actually work. So I'm going to go back here. And now that we've actually got these pages, we can delete these dummy links. And we can add the pages in from here. So services blog and about about services and blog that was the format remember we've got to do it twice for the mobile menu as well what's the order about services blog there we go And don't forget, we've got our um, footer menu. So let's go in and edit our footer and make those links work now as well. You can do it that way, or you can actually just search for the page whichever way works. I usually just type the um, forward slash in case you're working on a staging environment and any links get messed up. It will always work because it's just forward slash about. We then need to do the same thing on um, these icons, but we do it this way. So we do forward slash about hash team, for example. And let me just create some anchor links to show you. I'm adding an anchor link there that we can refer back to here. I've got another video on anchor links, so don't worry if you don't know what they are. The video explains all of it really simply, so you can uh, understand how they work. What do I call it? Team. Oh no, meet, I think I call it. Let's just see if I'm doing that right. Long old video. Yeah, cool. So as you'll find out in my anchor link video, you can do that and load yourself to a specific part of the page. So do that for your footer menus. Um, you know, go through each individual link and create anchor links if you want to use them. I mean, I'm doing this because everything is on the one about page. You'd probably just have specific pages. What we do might go to a what we do page. But if you did want to use anchor links, you could, you know, put that forward slash. Uh, you could just change it to about forward slash hash what we do. But remember to um, set the anchor link up first. Let's just do the main ones, service. And contact is going to be the Let's Talk page. So let's go do that now. Let's create the Let's Talk page and let's do some more form stuff. Let's Talk is basically going to be contact us. We'll call it Let's Talk. So we've got the Let's Talk page open now. Let's just go into the Elemental Editor and we'll start putting together the kind of basic stuff. Um, so what do we usually have? 
kind of like um so these pages usually have um like a a map type thing some contact info and a form so let's try and uh, make a simple page so um, put a map here just say um, Norwich and then we'll put some details here um, visit us we'll just put a heading uh, maybe like an icon box so we can list the address I'll click back on this. So just do that. Then we can just click update. So the map updates with the address. Um, okay, so let's do like a little address icon box here, even though we've kind of got it on the map. I'm going to put it here as well. So, super agency HQ. in some postcode what we want to do is put the icon to the left I don't even think we need that heading actually yeah that's kind of what I was going for so we'll do that the icons quite small at the moment so let's make that quite big sorry let's trim it mm, if we trim it down it kind of goes where I don't want it to actually so just leave it like that for now visit us okay let's add a little bit of blurb here so drop by for coffee sometime let's pretend that this is not during covid and we can still do all these things Drop by for coffee sometime to learn about how we can help your business. So yeah, just basic. I mean, if we were going to do this properly, we might want to um, style the map and control the sort of stuff that we include, but I think that's fine for now. I mostly wanted to show you on this page contact forms because they're probably the only hard bit really for a contact page. So. Let's just put one in now. A little bit of padding. And let's find the elemental form module. Let's do one more thing. Let's do the um let's get that divider we were using. Spruce it up a little bit. Just get a divider from here. Copy that, drop it here, put the divider under that, spruce it up a little bit. We'll duplicate this heading. We'll change this to um, send us a message and Gonna do another thing. I'm gonna take the background color off here. I'm gonna put it on the second section just so that it contrasts a bit. I think we might need to add a bit more padding on these rows as well. Let's just see what it looks like. 
preview. Yeah, it looks a bit too crammed, this stuff. So we'll do the 60 padding on the top and the bottom. Do the same on this one. Click update. Let's refresh, see how that looks. Okay, yeah, I think that looks better now. So now let's look at the actual contact form. I think because it's a contact page to have a big form like this is actually okay. I don't think it would make sense to um, make the field smaller because the main objective of this page is to either, you know, show people where they can visit you in person or to send a message. So we kind of want to draw attention to these two sections. So I don't think there's any need to make them smaller. Let's take a look at the form. So I've got a quite a long tutorial on how elemental forms work. So I won't go into loads of detail on that. If you want to you know, learn how to use forms the easy way in Elementor. Um, there's a video on my channel about forms. So check that out, forms in Elementor. I think it's called forms the easy way with Elementor. I'll just show you a quick overview now. So got the fields here for the form. I think that's the kind of basics. Um, placeholder on message, we'll change that to, please let us know how we, can help include anything relevant like timeline, budget, and specifics of your project. Buttons, let's change that from send to submit. And let's look at actions after submit because that's the important part. Here's where you can determine what happens when the form is actually submitted. So at the moment, two things are happening, collecting submissions and sending an email. So collect submissions is kind of self-explanatory. So when the form is submitted within the Elemental dashboard, there's a little section now that you can see all the individual form submissions. I'll just show you that quickly. If you go to the back end, hover over Elemental, hover over submissions, as you can see that there. Uh, when the form submitted, you'll see a list of submissions there and you can click in, you can see who sent the form and what they've said, etc. So that's set up email. This setting determines where the form goes when you submit it. So you can control who receives the form, what the subject is. So this might be let's talk inquiry. And you can also uh, set the from email. So, um, you know, who the submissions are coming from on the from email. I usually just change that to my email. You can control uh, the reply to email. So if people want to respond to the form submissions, the default reply to uh, when they create their email will be whatever you set there. You can set up a CC or blind CC. So you can CC members of the team if you want to have multiple people receive copies and you can also blind CC certain people as well. Again, I guess if you want to have um, someone receive it, but Maybe other recipients don't know they're receiving it. There's some metadata here that you don't really need to worry too much about. And that's the gist of it, really. As I said, I've got a quite a long uh, video on elemental forms where I go into a lot of detail about how they work, how to style them, etc. So if you're not sure and you're a bit uncertain on forms, make sure you watch that video. Um, you know, if you combine it with this video and the other videos on my channel, you'll be able to do uh, pretty much everything you need to create small, simple websites in Elementor. Let's just click update, update the page. I think that's everything now for the video. I think we've got through quite a lot. We've got the home page done. We've done a services page, we've done an about page. We did a blog. We did the contact page. That's there. That's there. That's there. I think that's everything. So I just wanted to give you a good overview really of creating a simple elemental website from scratch and just walk you through the sort of process and show you some of the tips and tricks that I use. Hopefully you found the video useful. If you did, make sure you subscribe for future videos. Some more is releasing fresh WordPress content. 
If there's anything that you would have liked to see in the video, anything you want to see in future videos, because I might do more of these long videos where I'll make a website from scratch, make sure you let me know in the comments. And if it's something I can do for you, then I'll be happy to. Thanks as always for watching the video and hopefully I'll see you on future videos.